What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki third party Transformers review, we're gonna take a look at another Warren Pocket Dinobot from DX9. And this time it is the Flamethrower Bumper. That's a really weird name. Flamethrower totally makes sense. Bumper? I bump. He's gonna bump you. But yeah, so just like all the other ones we've looked at so far, we've got the great War in Pocket logo right here with that great 80s dual metallic look. You've got legendary heroes in your pocket. Yay! All right, great shot of Bumper charging at you right here. And of course, that is the original Dinobot Slag or Slug or Snarl because they can't really come up with the right name, copyrights, defensive names, all that stuff. I'm calling him Slag. So he is Slag to me. That's what he's going to be. And of course, you have his robot mode right over here. X-Tall 18, flamethrower bumper. So he's actually significantly earlier than the ones we've looked at. So it's pretty cool. So if we come around this side, you've got obligatory repeat of images there. That's actually very nice. Look at that. That's pretty. And of course, all the stuff there. Come around to the back, you get the same mural going on here where everybody's fighting everybody. And yeah, once again, I really want to get the Constructicons. Uh, it's about $130 for the whole set, so I'm going to work on that. And of course, you've got Dino Mode, Robot Mode, Stats, but with no details. So yay for that. And you come over here, you get a repeat of the box art. If you come up here, you get everything in G1-esque format, yet it's upside down, so I will turn it that way. I love the G1 kind of gradient slash grid there. That's pretty awesome. You come to the bottom, and it does say it's only suitable for people 15 years old. Don't give the children under 3. It is standard grade, ages 15 plus. Hey, I'm right in the middle of that. And DX9 2016. So if we pop open the box, if I can pop open the box. I will say one thing about these boxes. They are not the easiest thing to open. All right, guys, so we get the box open, and you get the same kind of squishy clothes thing here. So you'd have Bumper right there in his dino mode with a little bit of paint rubbish right there. Weird. And you have his rifle and his sword, once again, molded in very nicely and just like so. So let's actually get this guy out here and see how cool he really is. All right, guys, we've got a little bumper out of his kit packaging here and looking like a little squat triceratops, really. Um, I think my only complaint about him in dino mode is he has this ginormous body and little bitty head. Like, it's almost like the head should be tilted up a little bit more or something. It, it, it's He's almost like an armadillo. He's just got this huge hump of a back. The frill and then comes down to the neck. But other than that, those look pretty cool. Definitely has that G1 kind of aesthetic for the most part. He doesn't have the clear head or anything like that. There's a toy head, but he's got the G1 uh, animation look down. So he's got the yellow tail, the yellow bits here, the nice yellow toes, the overall silver body with some black accents, and of course the chrome frill around the neck. So he's definitely looking like his little Triceratops self. Now he does, of course, have little painted blue eyes, as he should. Nice metallic thing. Little clear horns. I don't think the clear was necessary, but, I mean, it's a nice touch. But one thing you'll notice, they're very, very close together. Personally, I would love it if they could spread out just a little bit. Actually, that's a nice little glow going on there. Now, the only problem with that is that these things do not rotate. They are kind of fixed in position you can wiggle it off just a little bit and see he's got a square peg square hole so i was trying to fix it so originally when i got them out of the box they were actually backwards they had them backwards left to right so they actually turned inward on each other and that was definitely wrong when i figured out they could come off that was the happiest minute of my life now one thing i would love to do is actually round that off a little bit so you can actually get just a little bit more turn out of it but it's pretty good. They're not very sharp either. This little guy, the, the the nose horn, is. Now you do get a nice little nub mark right there. That is what it is. You got some red wiring coming through here. A little black panel there. Nice little silver body. Doesn't have any of the two-tone. Doesn't have like the darker and lighter tones of silver. Just all the same one. Does actually have the clear translucent bits. Kind of smoky look going on there. Silver little legs. 
little yellow feet. Actually painted fairly well compared to his uh, compatriots. Now if you come to the belly, you actually have minimal robot kibble. It actually looks pretty good. You know, it's a flat belly. You do got a little bit of a cavity right there. No big deal. His mouth does actually open like so. Looks pretty good. No tab or anything in there, but I bet you could get a flame effect. He does say his name is Flamethrower. Would be awesome if he actually came with some flame effects. So Now, in dino mode, he only has a little bit of articulation. So the front legs do move. They're also on a ball, ball joint, so they do turn in and out. It does look like he can move his front knees, but he actually can't. The way it's designed, as far as I can tell, the front legs do not pivot, which is kind of a shame. Now you do, of course, get the rear legs that move very tight on the universal hinge here, and you do get a knee joint so you can get him kind of squatting if you really want to, like sitting on his bum, and like just kind of boom. Turn the legs out a little bit so you can sit on his butt, kind of like, kind of like uh, Grimlock did. That's pretty cool. Now, we'll show off one issue that I have with this guy, and I brought it up actually in the sludge review, and it's that. You can see the big scratches right through there. Mind you, I did that because it's very, very difficult to transform this rear end the way they designed it. Now, it does transform nicely cleanly when it's finished, but it is very difficult to actually make the maneuver, and when we get to transformation, we'll look at that. So... It's already nicely scratched. I guess realistically, this is a different silver than this, or it's just smoother. I think this is a slightly rougher finish. I don't know. It looks different to me. It does actually have a nice little molded bolts, little molded detail all over, even up top. And something that's different about this guy, this, this little section right here, is not the feet. This is not his toes. That is a major difference for this toy, and I actually do appreciate that. But before we get too much further, let's actually do some comparison. So we'll set him back here. Get him to stand straight. Those front feet are a little bit annoying. Now let's trans or compare him to the big boy from Planet X. So the Planet X queerness, you can see there's a massive, massive size difference. And also the stylistic difference of the Planet X versions. Now mind you, this is after the Reaper labels and after I've added some paint to it, so it's gonna be a little bit different looking. I still need to actually film this update review, so I'll set him aside. Also, check out Blue Eyes. Now we'll bring in his compatriots. So we'll bring in Sludge right there. And we'll bring in his leader. Get out of the shot there in Grimlock. And this is of course the original three Dinobots finally all together here in, in the Shoki Cave and very very happy about this little collection. Now the sizes while in robot mode I think it's all pretty close. Now scale wise as dinosaurs probably not actually close to how they should be but they look pretty good. But you can see where I think that maybe his his head is a little bit weird it's not quite how I think it should be. Even compared to the G1 toy that I did actually have back in the day. Actually, I had the G2. Apologies. It actually isn't very close. But as a representation to the G1 animation, it's actually pretty good. Now, let me actually scooch these guys out of the way real quick. And I'll bring up a G1 image over here, hopefully, if I did it right. So you see how he looks in robot mode, see how close it is. I think it's pretty close. You can see the obvious differences, but it's actually pretty decent. They got the colors and stuff like that pretty much right. Oh, and before we go, of course, we have to introduce him to Wally. Wally, this is your new Dinobot buddy. I don't know if you could ride him, but that's Slug. <laughs> Let's get a picture. There we go. Slug. Dang it, I keep calling him Slug. See what they've done to me? They make me think his name is Slug now. It's Slag. Let's see if I can get Wally up on there. Probably not. It's a little tough. That's that just awkward now. All right, so he's a little too small for Wally to ride. That's okay. I don't want it to be like up on the horns. <laughs> it works, but you know, for a forklift, that's actually pretty funny. And also, just because I'm gonna keep him, I'm gonna keep him under control this time. But there, there you go. There's Squishy Junior. So just, just. Be good. Be good. He's got these big horns. You don't want to mess with that. 
See? You didn't no. No. Come here. Okay. So Squishy Jr. like to go after the smaller robots, so we'll just be good and not not let him do that. Sorry guys, I was actually trying to get him to rear up, and I've done it before, but for some reason in here, now, he doesn't want to. I don't know if I got the angle wrong, something, but there's, it's stiff enough on the rear legs, because of course those are going to be his shoulders and arms, that you can, or you should be able to get him to rear up. I did it before and he stayed just fine, could also be my review surface isn't the most level thing in the world now before i actually get to the transformation i'll show off the instructions because i'm going to need them and you can see why it's a little bit weird i like the fact that they have wheel jack right there that's pretty cool i can't wait till they actually give us a wheel jack all right so very much like sludge he actually does do a little bit of break dancing it's this section right in here getting all this cleared out and out of the way is where the damage will take place if you're not careful. So, like I said, I'm going to keep these handy, no pun intended, but, you know, just in case, because I always seem to get hung up when it comes to transforming the legs. I'm going to keep those right over here. So, I think as it showed, you want to do this number, get him to do the splits, and then, hold on, i got to tilt the camera up just a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Then you want to split the tail, and all of this. Now you see the double hinges here are where you're going to get your help for that. And you turn them pretty much straight out like so. Then on this double hinge here, well, I guess it's technically a single hinge, fold, fold it down like so. So you've got the tails pointed this way. Now you're going to rotate. It's still going to scrape, but you're going to rotate the legs up and over as best you can. So that's just totally hung up there. It doesn't go around it. So it's crap. It's crap right out of the box. But I think what you can do is just sort of do it at the same time. So I can get one clear. The other side doesn't want to. So if you just pull that out and just rock this whole thing forward it'll get past it but not without doing a little bit of damage right there and you can also see some scrapage right there all right so we want to do this we want the feet out like so now you want to come well the arms technically you want to come up here and you want to split this in half which is not the easiest thing in the world and let's see if i can use my handy dandy Lego tool here because they're actually pegged in up here that's where the issue comes from so they're they're tabbed together in a couple places but then you have to break it loose from the center section and of course you want to rotate that out once it's free so you've got your legs like so now this is actually a pretty cool part of the transformation, so you want to use that double hinge there. And you're going to fold all this inward and on itself. Probably didn't see that. Now you flip this up to become the toes, and you flip the tail tip inward. Now let's see if I can capture that a little bit better on this side. So double hinge, flip around like so, turn downward open flip forward okay there we have the legs so you want to turn the legs downward more or less like that and this is where it starts to just become a bit of a jumbled mess so you want to come up here grab the sides pull them open they're just tabbed in and then rock that down pull these open and you'll just kind of pull that down out of the way another part of my the transformation is like my favorite you take the arms and you just or the front legs and you tuck them away just like that just hide them inside the backpack now actually before you straighten out the hips you need to rotate this whole section and flip it up you got two big tabs there to go in the corresponding holes right there come up push them in 
straighten up the arms now the hard part is getting the hands out so you kinda have to use a weapon to pull them out because there's nothing else at all <laughs> there's no tab there's no nothing to help you pull that out so it's just like so and I guess there it might be a small tab there but it is impossible to use from what I can tell and of course the final step as always with a good slag is to lower down the dino jaw and the head comes with it like so boom and there we have him in robot mode let me get this cleaned up and we'll come right back All right, now we've got bumper all cleaned up and in robot mode and looking very, very nice. Very G1 slag. He's got the red chest going on. You've got the bottom of the mouth all nice and chromed out. They did go with the redhead blue eyes variation. I really do dig that. And of course, some of the other variations in the world, you do get a red face place instead of a silver one. I dig this version. I'm definitely okay with it. Now, one alternate way to transform it is to have the face turn completely backwards in there, and that would work out fine. So, and then you just have to turn it. But he does actually have an articulated head. It's on a ball joint. So he can look down. He can look up. You can turn it. It's just really tight. So like so, looks pretty good. Does have the nice silver crest. The arms are pretty much the exact same as they were before. Very tight joints here, universal going this way. You do get bicep rotation that's very, very tight. Single jointed elbow and no articulation in the wrist, just like his buddies. So you got no waist articulation, but if you really wanted to lean or something, you can do that and just have a nice cut open belly. And this guy has the loosest hips. That is a big problem. Now, I've heard Bobby Skullface actually really complain about the hips on a lot of his. This is the first one I've had where they're really loose. A little bit of floor polish or maybe even some clear coat should clean that up pretty good. But you do get nice front kick, nice back kick, and a perfect Jean-Claude, as you do. Just T-mounted ball joints. It works. You do have the thigh cut out, though look, the plastics are a very different type of plastic. You can really see it there. Nice silver, kind of a muddy gray. Don't know what happened there, but it is a thing. Like I said, thigh rotation. You get the knee bend. Of course, that's part of the transformation. You get almost 90 degrees. And actually, you get f foot and ankle articulation. So because of the transformation, you can really kick the ankle inward. You're not going to go 90 degrees. But you can also get toe point. You might do it gets a little extreme when you do it like that, but you can get a little bit without a problem. So you can actually stand pretty well on his own. You don't have to have the feet just like perfect, but of course that he's going to go into limbo. But you can get a decently wide, stable stance with him. You just kind of have to play with the ankles, and he just ends up with like some flared out pant legs, which is actually pretty neat. Now he does have accessories, you've already seen one, so you get his cool sword, very G1-esque, nice ribbed blade there, and a little, nice little guard. Does plug into his hands, as we've already seen, as I use that, of course, to get this guy kind of out here. And he does come with a very G1-esque gun, also with these strange paint issues. You can see the tip of the gun kind of has some issues going on there. I'll probably end up just giving these things a quick spray or something like that. Just give them a little bit more. I mean, for a $35 toy, I expect the accessory to be a little bit cleaner. A little bit better than they are. But is pretty good looking in robot mode, which I don't know. See, this is the problem with these. I like them so much in both modes that I can't decide which way I'll display it. I mean, in robot mode, they're all going to look good. They're all going to look as they should. Dino mode, they're all so close. I just don't know. It's kind of a problem, guys. I don't know. So let's scooch him back here. And we'll do some comparisons. So to compare again to the Planet X, you can see the massive, massive size difference here. And of course, two completely different class of uh, figures. But you can see the similarities. You know, you've still got the red. You've got the silver where it counts. 
Mind you, he's got a big toothy claw right in front of his face. But you got red visor, black head on this guy, of course, red face, blue visor on him. But once again, different aesthetic. But of course, you get the horns still doing her thing. Well, this is still one of my favorite figures with one of the more annoying transformations and super loose arms. But hey, it's pretty good. Now bringing in the rest of his teammates. Uh, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Because I can't have everybody on the screen at the same time without somebody wanting to fall. So let me straighten out his feet. Okay. So we've got Quaker who is being a pain in the butt, not wanting to stand properly. There we go. And of course, Rager with Mr. Grimlock here. Still my favorite. Still the best so far in transformation. I guess because he's one of the later ones, maybe, is why his transformation is so much better than the other two. Three, five, four, I don't know. <laughs> but there's our original G1 Dinobot team. And they look really good together. And let me try to line them up a little bit better. See height-wise. Okay, so Slag is a little bit shorter than Sludge. But essentially the same size as Grimlock. So not counting this, I'm going only by the head. So we got Sludge in the middle, who's the tallest. Which I think maybe... I'll mix it up a bit. Of course, everybody's got their swords. Everybody's got their individual guns. And I really do dig that. That's actually, it looks pretty good. Like I said, very good looking team. If you need a new kind of version of your G1 Dinobots, I think this is a great, great selection, great opportunity that DX9 is giving us with this Warren Pocket series. Now, they do have some incredibly tight tolerances and some paint issues, especially with things getting chipped, like over here, or scraped off because the, the tolerances are too close. But I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna play with them, that's one thing. If you're gonna just store them in one mode or the other, it should be perfectly fine. But like I said, which one do you go with? I mean, what in your opinion, guys? Let me know down below. Robot mode, Dino mode. Which one would you go for for this set? Because it looks good either way. But that's gonna be it for this review. I hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, I picked these up at Big Bad Toy Store. If you guys want to check that out. They have the whole selection of the DX9 Warren Pockets. Um, I want to thank my patrons, as always, Andy, John, Steve. You guys are terrific. If you guys are interested in Patreon at all, it'll be on the screen. Go over there. They usually get early looks at stuff. They get to pick, reviews to actually look at, and a few other things like that. And if you guys are new here, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you haven't checked out the Life of Shoki channel, go over there. You can see a lot of behind the scenes, especially stuff that happened during this review. If you're interested in that, go check it out. Go over there and give it a little bit of love. Like and subscribe to that channel because I'm trying to vlog pretty much every day behind the scenes and in my personal life if you're interested at all. But I'll catch you guys on the next review. And remember, as always, keep on nerding. Oh, and he Dinobot. Er <clears throat> Oh, and he Grimlock, he King.